What is up? We're gonna do this light makeup application. Less is more makeup application. Today I just wanna hone in and hit it hard and show you some things that I've been messing around with. We're gonna look like a goober. <laughs> All the things, but welcome. I love it when people join me live. It's one of my most favorite things. So if you feel comfortable with putting kind of the where you're from, don't give me exact locations. It's fun. It's all awesome. But what I really want to hone in today is that light makeup application and how we can speed up the process of our makeup or just really hone in on where we're, we want to look like us in the end. So I always kind of have a routine with how I do things in so that I, one, I'm not wasting time, but also for if things need to dry and what have you. So I'll get my brows um, this is a clear brow gel. This is a brow gel from Anastasia. Um, I have a link to all of my favorite things um, in many places, but if there's ever a link to something that, and I'll try to link things, you know, after the fact, what's up? Uh, but when, if there's ever a link that I miss, never hesitate to reach out to me. It doesn't bother me one bit. Never hesitate. If I miss you, um, I, I promised I try not to, but you can always email me to Jocelyn at fitmissionmakeup.com and I can give you the link to things because sometimes it makes it a billion times easier. Sometimes it doesn't matter. Not so much. Hey, hey, hey. All right. So what I'm going to do is um, kind of show you this actually comes into play with that light makeup application look, okay? And so the next thing that I do is, so on my face so far, I washed it, I put hyaluronic acid, and I have vitamin C serum. That's all that I have on my face so far. This plays a huge role in your makeup. So I have a moisturizer that I feel does such a great job to my under eyes. It's from Saint. Yes, I am. I work with Saint and all that jazz, but there's another one that I love called layers. And if you feel like you're inclined to like, I don't know some people, I wouldn't care about stuff like that, but this one, I, 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 you can see a difference within minutes. Okay. So this is where I apply. I apply here for a couple different things. Some people have issues with skin getting up to the, or like moisturizer getting up to the eye, but it's, because we're like literally smearing it next to our eyeball and our eyes don't like that. But I haven't found like a sensitive to, sensitivity to this. And I think it um, plays such a part. So what I do is I place it here because that's where the trough is, right? Like that's where everybody's problem is, right? It doesn't matter how old you are, none of that jazz. So this is our less is more type. Okay. So then I come in here and you can see though too. So everything's already hydrated all that jazz, but this just really hones into that trough and where that eye wants to look dry. And I can bring it down into here. And the thing that I like about this moisturizer is it gives me a good glow. So I'm going in order of operations to save time. I did my brows, it's drying, it's still a little bit tacky. I placed that, it needs to sit just a little bit. And then I'm gonna go to my, my sunscreens. So I use sunscreen as a primer. I have tried this method out like crazy, but you have to be kind of exact with the ones you use. So for example, I have oily and dry skin. So where I'm oily, I'm gonna use one type of sunscreen. Where I'm dry, I'm gonna use another type. Sounds high maintenance, but when you're trying to get down to the nitty gritty, you want less things to put on your face before you do your makeup. Having less things to apply really creates more of the look that you're going for without the added issues. So hello, what is up? Hi, hi, hi. How are you all? I, I just love having this on here. What's up? Happy Tuesday. Okay. So this is going to do its job. Let me grab my sunscreens that I choose. I have this blog that has all this. Sun I seriously tried out these sunscreens for like three months going into different scenarios, different, all the things with travel, humidity, dry, oily, not oily, all that jazz. Um, so I didn't take, I didn't favor any companies. I didn't do anything like that. I just tried out a crap ton. I researched if they had zinc, titanium dioxide, trying to get it out of silicones, getting away from that. And then I applied for a dang long time. 
So on my blog, it's just those top ones that I really liked. I put what type of skin type it's for. And I suggest getting all of the ones that's for your skin type and testing them out and see which ones you like best. So let me grab, um, sadly, the ones, the one, I don't know what I did. I really like the Ren one for, that I have listed on there. And I'll, again, after this live, I'll go and plug in the link for that blog. Um, but I really like the Ren one that I have. And this one isn't my favorite. This is La Roche Posse. It's not my favorite just because it doesn't have the most of the ingredients that I really think is important. Um, but this one's good for oily skin. I just, you can tell I use other ones, so they're not in here. So I'm going to take my oily skin sunscreen and I'm going to place it where I'm oily. So the goal for a less is more makeup application is you want your skin glowing. But how can your skin be glowing if you feel that you're somebody who's already glowing from oily skin? You don't want to have your skin shining through. So this helps that. So I'm, ugh, I hate it when you get the goobers from your, um, from stuff. I don't like the goober part. So I don't want glowing where I already feel I'm glowing from having my oily skin. So I am addressing where am I oily? Hello. And then I'm going to come in where I feel I want hydration, where I want there to be a glow. That's where I tend to get dry. And I'm going to apply that sunscreen. So I'm just pressing it also on because I did put that moisturizer and I want to keep that. And then this is the one I'm also going to put on your neck, my neck, because you should not be skipping your neck. So I don't want to put an oily skin one on my neck because heaven forbid, the older we get, the more we need that skin to be looking soft and supple. So we'll be going and then you should not have jewelry on. <laughs> and then moving on to that. Okay. So then why that is drying, that is when I move into eyes. That is when I move into adding onto my brows, however that needs to be. Um, so what you're going to see, see me be using today is two di just different kinds of methods. So just sit back and enjoy because you actually have not been seeing me apply my makeup like this. Um, fully. So we're just going to move on through and call it a day. So, and will I do it differently probably next time? Yeah. So this is what I've been toying around with. Um, this method, this little method, again, just try this out for yourself. If it's not your cup of tea, that is awesome. I love it. If you discover, if you do this and, and you discover this, this method that I'm going to show you, isn't your cup of tea. That's okay with me, but you should reach out to me and say, Hey, I tried your method. Love it. Don't love it. Didn't love it because of this. Loved it because of this. Because um, I like hearing from you. So you can either put it in the comments of the live once you've tested it out. Or you can message me on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram over at um, jocelyn.mcclellan. And then um, in all of my YouTube videos, I always say that I go live every Tuesdays and Thursdays, which I do. But um, I'm kind of in that midst of seeing what I want to do with lives. Hence, here we are on YouTube going live. So just trying to get to the bottom of this and seeing where I want to go with all of that. I still want to go live. I just hate apps <laughs> with a passion. But it, it is what it is. All right. So the first thing that I'm going to start out with is kind of like... I'm going to go with my eyes. So um, you always see me, if you've watched any of my tutorials or anything, I always love an eye primer, but Sigma has a great eye primer. They're tinted that are the color of like makeup colors. Okay. So with this natural look though, I want to have something that is natural to the eye. So I'm going to pop back out. I love Mac um, eye primer and their paint, uh, their paint pot, the ochre one is really good. <laughs> and then this is NYX and this one's just called skin tone. Okay. So this is NYX and I'm just going to put it on the eye and even out the tones. If you're somebody that you have, um, tinted more, a natural skin color, tinted eye, 
then you want to do something like this to help kind of neutralize that out. But you also might need to do a little color theory on your eyes if you feel that your eyes pull more of a blue or more of a purple. Because then if you do the color theory, like with the demi correctors that I am always talking about on some form of social media, um, and here I have um, a demi and a 3D foundation um, video too that you can check out. So this is just neutralizing the eye to make it look really natural. Hello. Okay, from there, I'm going to move on in to, like I said, the like. this is just, I've just been messing around with this thing. So notice we still have a glow in the skin with that sunscreen. That's key. That's what you want for this, okay? So I'm gonna go into my Demi Correctors. And within the Demi Correctors, I always wanna be facing a window when I do this so that the light from a room isn't taking my coloring to a color that it's not. So my inner eyes have like a purple blue. So I apply this, this so lightly. So today, um, somebody reached out to me and said, man, I wish I could, I wish I could get Demi to work for me. I have too many wrinkles. And my answer to that was, it does not matter how many wrinkles you have. What matters is getting less. And she said, I am doing less. It's way less than you think. So I'm going to put this into perspective one more time because this is a really important thing because it's hard when you see um, different people teaching it in tutorials. If you can see the color pop on your face like that, there's too much. If you can have your brush and you pop it onto your finger and you see a strong like pin mark it's too much and so the goal is to kind of teach yourself how to get less and less on the brush it really is less is more and if you have too much if you keep smearing it around that is too much too so i always have to make sure that even when i touch it back onto my face i grab off that excess make sure there's nothing extra on my hand i'm on the brush is what i what i did thanks sandra i love your hair you're awesome okay I love, oh, I love you here. I love your hair. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love you here. <laughs> I like being here. All right. So I'm just neutralizing the things out with the Demi, um, right? With tones that need to be placed per going across from the color wheel, opposite of the color wheel than what we have there. So I would just hit any area that is bothersome to me that I think is the area because the more we can keep our skin looking like our skin for this look we're doing, this is um, definitely what we're trying to hit up the less, the last make, less makeup application method. The more we can make our skin look like skin, the better it is. Okay. And so anytime you take a thicker amount of makeup and you take a layer of makeup and cover that skin, that natural glow that you see, and I don't have a ring light on. This is just light from my natural window. So if I, as if the coloring looks drab, I wanted to make sure that I didn't have a ring light on. Like I can turn one on, but I didn't want to have one on so that you and I were on the same playing field with colors and and how it comes in and how how you see light uh, within the room. Okay, so I'm just gonna continue and place. And it looks like I'm just kind of smearing this on, but I'm being very direct, extremely direct. If you can do this part, just tapping stuff in, you're going too fast. You're, you're not paying attention to what you're doing. And that is truly, if you don't have time to have a thought process in there, like, do I really need this here? Then you're going too fast. So I'm at the point where I literally am just placing where my darkest points are. And I don't go to the sides of that. I stay directly on it. And when I do this, it's literally just bouncing into the troubled area. It's not sweeping. And yes, I am going like this for a reason so I can stretch out the wrinkles and get in those areas.
And when you see me hit my hand, that's because I did have too much on my brush and now I'm having to pay the price for it. Okay, and almost done. So this is really truly hitting up that foundation um, strongly for what we want to accomplish with this less makeup look. That's way too much. See how you see those lines right there? Way too much. So if I have to get them off, I can use this brush, but I would just want to make sure my brush is completely cleaned off and then what I touch next needs to be that it actually needs to go there. Okay, and then I have, my face is kind of pulling blue tones in almost this roundish area, but nothing in the middle, like a donut. And sometimes that happens. And so I wanna release those blue tones right in there. Okay, and you might think this is too long, but just to say, have a color wheel. I got my edit. They do have a color wheel. It should have came with a color wheel. If it didn't, my color match from you has a color wheel in it. So go to the color match packet and there will be a color wheel right there and that will help you out for sure. Okay, um, and if you didn't get one, I would reach out to Saint and say, bro, can I please have a color wheel? Cause I thought that that's, you put these in the orders and see, and see what they say about that. Cause they were including color wheels. So I don't know why that would have changed unless the hosers who are packaging and up left, left people hanging. Okay. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do, and this was just, this is called Demi correctors and Demi correctors are truly just working across from the color wheel at the issue of hand. And I have, I always give a lot of information on that. You can watch a Demi specific live for that, where I go into more detail for the colors. Cause I do have that as well. Now we're going to pull, we, I, I am going to pull this brush that's called the, the blend brush. This is your best friend. It's not meant to be dense. A dense brush will not work as good as this, but this is the blend brush that, um, that it's truly going to be your best friend, but you're only going to be using the very, very tip of this brush. Sometimes you're going to be using the tip of this brush, but everything is going to be at the tip and it's going to be such a minimal amount of makeup. So the first thing I do is I'm going to take my contour and you're going to see me use this color nude and you're going to say, hello, you're going to see nude and you're going to see me use my contour, but you're going to see my contour used differently than how you've seen it. You're actually not going to really see much of me using contour here. And if I do, it's going to be so crazy light. So I personally have changed how I use contour. If I color match it, which PS, I do custom color matches for this. So if you are guessing, like trying to guess what colors you'd be, you don't have to. So you just take an, a picture of you facing an open window. I will put the link in the thing, but it's truly so easy. Just when you think of me, think of Fit Mission Makeup. Dot com. Okay. Fitmissionmakeup.com. There's even little videos that are more descriptive that are like one to two minutes that you can watch too, if you're confused, but I'll, I can color match you. I'm really going to hone in on these three colors right here, but three for your face. And then you can choose what you want with all the, all the rest. So it's really cool because these palettes are completely made by you. So they're magnetized. So however, and whatever size you want, notice that other one that I had was way smaller, whatever size you want, you get to create. So there's no like, Joss, how much money do you spend on your makeup? It's truly like however you want it. It's the coolest thing ever. And see how all the colors are close together. You're not wasting, you know how one, they'll put like five colors in a palette and the palette is like this big, but the colors are that teeny tiny. And then it's so annoying because you just wasted a whole palette. Everything's close together. So no space is wasted. Okay. Are you ready for this? Hello, you're having, you are having a winter storm. Claire says we're having a winter storm in Texas. It is cold in Texas. Bundle up. Now, first things first that I'm going to do is I'm going to hone in and I'm going to create my eyes to look a little bit darker, but I'm going to do this with my contour. But why it was important for me to put my primer on my eyes is because I have oily eyelids. So if I don't put a primer on for a cream, I'm in trouble. So kind of gauge that too for you. So I'm just going to pounce this in here a couple times. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to not care so much about making it completely even, but we're adding depth and warmth to the eye and I'm going to fan it out. 
So I'm seriously just fanning it all out. I cannot see very well, so I pray this looks good. <laughs> so I'm gonna do it to the other eye. And like I said, the goal, I'm not going all the way to the brow and I'm not caring if it's specifically, specifically even, but I'm fanning it out even out into here. So like I said, this is for a less makeup, less is more, light makeup application, however you wanna call it. Okay, then the next thing from here is I'm gonna take this nude color and I'm gonna, just on the tip of my brush, so it just has one little pop, I'm gonna come to, a lot of times we call this the dead zone, especially the older that we get, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna like fill that dead zone. And if you wanna do it with your finger too, and just place it on that dead zone right there, cause we're gonna add in this neutral, natural look, okay? So I'm gonna start now, after I did that, I'm gonna do these little swirls and then I'm gonna take it on back. So I'm gonna do this lift to create a lift in the back of my cheek. And this is just with a nude blush. And so it's just these swirls it's just, and I'm doing a light swirl, not a press hard. So this is not a dense brush. So it should not be flattening on your face. These are just soft, light swirls. If you have nude, could you substitute with Ibiza? Yes, you could, but Ibiza might, well, Ibiza isn't a, a, a matte. This is, you definitely want to try this with a matte, but you do have drier cheeks, Stacy. So you could probably get away with using a semi-gloss. If you are oily though, you want to keep all of your, um, your blushes at more of a matte level on the cheeks, unless you're being very cautious. So just treat that one per your skin type for what you want to do or what you can do. Okay. And then I have to build around this giant, not giant, but it's a pretty big, it's right in my dead zone. It's like a flattened looking, but it's where my melasma is. So I have to build carefully, but since I'm going with just the tip of my brush, it does make it easier to, to do that. Okay. So from here, um, I am going to, I built that like kind of up and you can take your contour on this backside and lift things up back within here, like this backside and then lift up. And then with my contour, if you feel more comfortable to take your finger and take your contour with your finger because you struggle, because I just seriously move it around on my forehead. If you have a teeny forehead, you want, don't want to get this, your contour, you have to put it where you can, but, um, but you can also swirl it softly and just get a little bit but adding that warmth on your forehead is nice <laughs> you will appreciate it you don't want to go too ashy there though okay and then of course if you want to do the jawline because the jawline is a place that you feel you want to clean that up you can okay so there's that. Now, the next thing that I'm gonna do that this depend, this next one, I'm pulling out a different compact, but just because it's not in my regular one. If you are dry or you don't have a, a skincare like that creates this um, warmth to your face, that is my son gaming, if you can hear it. Bless his heart. Okay. Um, I even told him to be quiet before and he's like, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, he doesn't know. So this is an illuminator. Illuminators from Saint are what a lot of other companies called a highlighter. So this one is a color that we don't currently have, but this one right here is, um, this one's called Dream. It was one that we used a while ago, but we have one called Angel that I love. So if you have more yellow tones, then use one that we, we have called Honey. And if you have more like pink tones in your face that you feel like a redness going through, like you can see the redness is showing up on my neck. I don't know why. Maybe I don't know. But then Angel is a great one. So if you take Angel and you just very carefully, again, just soft, put it right in here. And I'm pressing so softly onto my face. Like you can't even see my skin move. 
I'm just pressing so softly. And what I'm doing is I'm bringing in here because this is where we have a lot of texture within our skin and where we want the light to naturally hit. So no sweeping, the light's naturally hitting. Okay, and that's just gonna add that glow. And the reason why I do that first is because I am coming in with some um, foundation, but um, I wanted to do that first to create that glow so that when I come in with my foundation, it's not gonna do anything. So next thing is, okay, you look on your face, you're like, where? what annoys me on my face? Where do I feel like I need foundation? So I'm gonna do a teeny tiny bit on my chin right here. And the goal for this is to just be very light-handed and only getting it directly with what bothers you. So if you have redness that bothers you, my redness in the cheek kind of makes me nuts, but I can come in here with a super light hand and go really, really fast. And again, I'm just coming into the tip of my brush, pop, pop, and coming in here. And this area is easier to sweep unless you have sunspots. So just take it like what your skin is. If I'm saying something that really doesn't, um, just hold on one second. Boy, oh boy. Sorry about that. Real, real mom life here. Ha ha ha. Okay, I'm so funny. <laughs> so I'm so not embarrassed at this moment for that. Okay, so now I'm going to come to, well, I for sure want coverage on my nose, right? Because nose, noses always drive us nuts. So I'm going to cover the nose. And this again, so on noses, never sweep. You want either soft, soft swirls because you want to touch noses as little as possible because noses turn red easy. And then we're going to come. So we got that nose good. And then up in here, I want to, I have redness. So this might not bother you on yours, but that's an, that's an area for me that bothers me. Bill is asking on master's page, highlight before foundation. So that gets kind of confusing because your highlight is your foundation. So your highlight is your foundation colors. So I'll have to go in and check that out. All right, then I'm gonna come into here. And no, most people do not use a, a illuminator before their foundation. Most people leave that for after, okay. I am going to then take, this is where this light application just really polishes and finishes things off. So I'm going to go to this, these areas here, I want to leave alone as much as possible. Like any, so your goal is to hit the areas that drive you the craziest and just hit them. But then anywhere else, it's like either no makeup look or it is so light. It's not even funny. Nobody can see it. Like at all. Like if you look at me, you have no idea that I have foundation on. I might've just like chilled out some redness, but nobody would even know. Under your eyes, again, same thing. And this is how we're able to do that. So when you hit this makeup, it's going to be the softest. Like you literally cannot tell you just put foundation on your brush. So you're going to do a pop of your foundation and you're going to, don't just start applying. Then you ruin all of this. You're going to go, okay, where do I, where do I just need a little bit of coverage? And you're going to hit those areas that are exact that you know that you want coverage. Your, your goal is to not cover your whole entire face. Your goal is to come in and just hit that up and just nudge, nudge whatever needs nudged. Okay. So I am just coming to here because that area bugs me. I'm finishing, see that was too much. So I'm gonna take off any excess off my brush. And I'm going to just press off any of that excess. And I'm not having to touch up any of the areas that I did the Demi, cause I neutralized those all out um, to a lighter makeup application wear. And then I'm done with that. So the next thing that I do is I just come in and I line my lips. This is actually my brow pen, but it just gives such a natural look. And then I put on the gloss. 
So this gloss is called um, Summer Love. Okay, then for my eyes, I already added in that warmth. And so now all I wanna do for my eyes is I'm gonna take a little bit of liner. And this all rolls really fast when I'm not talking about it. This all roll, this comes together so, so fast when I'm not talking about it. So I had to get ready on Sunday and I did my whole entire face in, um, I timed it, it was six minutes, but that was with not talking and I already had my skin prepped. So in today's, I had to talk about skin prepping and stuff like that. So I already had all that done. So I'm going to come to this outer edge. And my goal for this is just to make that my eye have an ending on this outside. So, and I usually have a brush that I call the multitasker brush handy in case it doesn't go as planned. And I just want that to be softened. So see how that just like finishes out that edge and it just looks a ton better. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this side and I'm gonna keep it as close to that eyelid as I possibly can. And that one I messed up on. <laughs> so having this brush hand handy to hurry and move it and just smudge it is crazy helpful. And then I always, always, always wanna make sure that I never make it look not lifted I always want to make sure that I end the outside with a lift. So people will, they'll probably be able to see the edge of the outside of your liner, but they're not going to see liner going across your whole eye unless that was your goal. <laughs> hey guys, how's this tutorial going for you? <laughs> it's like, we can't feel. Um, I always feel like the center of my face is darker, but that's where you're the reddest. And so that is where the center of your face, you're going to chill out. Once you've, oh, see, I messed up. Once you have chilled it out, if you can take, so Stacy, one, make sure that your skin isn't super dry. But if you can take your, um, you. Over here. If you can take your color corrector, okay, get your color corrector, do it, maybe try a dab of the color corrector, dab of your foundation that you is a little bit lighter than where you color correct. And if you feel that there's key areas that you wish that you could soften just a little bit, take that lighter color that you have with one little thing. And when you're paying attention, see, this is the issue. This is the problem that we have when we do makeup. We're just going in free-handed willy-nilly because we're used to just smearing makeup all over our face. But if you have a purpose, if you have an intention, so if, let's say, for example, I my chin gets darker, but if I want to soften out just this coloring here and lightening that so it doesn't look so dark, and I'm just very direct, with where I want that to be, then I can soften out those areas. So for you, if you feel that you just need to soften like the center of your nose, just being exact with it. And cause that's, people are just starting to just put makeup all over their face. The goal for this is less is more. The goal for this is only put it where it's needed. It's not needed everywhere else. I didn't put it all over my whole entire cheek. I literally popped it in these areas finished out the corner of my eye and called it a day. But when I also, just so we're very clear, when I also did like this, I didn't just start placing. I went to in the mirror and I said, okay, you are a little darker there. You're a little darker there. You're a little darker there. And I just gave it one little pop. So I didn't place it. I didn't go. Cause that's not the less is more. The less is more is where are you truly needed? Cause I'm going to put you only in that area. Okay. All right. So then, um, oh, my eyes, it's time to just curl my lashes. And we'll wrap this up. And then I'm going to show you one final trick with your mascara. And then we are done. Okay. So with your mascara, it's kind of nice to have 
an older mask, if you get a brand new bottle, keep your other bottle for a little bit while the, while this one is so brand new, because one thing that you can do is get closer to the lash line when you don't have a brand new bottle. So we're going to go mid shaft, mid shaft and come up. And we're going to get off most of that mascara. So really the mascara is telling the story today instead of eyeshadows. Then we're going to come down to the lash line and wiggle up. Because what that did was we got that color right on the end of that, that lash line, right at the very tip of the lashes. Because it makes it look like it naturally has more liner for this less makeup look. So you're not having to put liner on your whole entire eye. Okay, so same thing to the other one. I've always been so afraid to curl my lashes. <laughs> you won't drop them off, but you're not alone in that feeling. I have a friend who she has that same fear. So after she's done, she just has a tissue on hand and um, she lets it dry just a little bit. And then she takes her fingers and she presses and she like closes her eye and she lifts up. And she presses up against them, but not onto the skin so that it doesn't get the, it on the skin. And that's how she curls her lashes. So just let them dry just a sec so they're not so wet. And then do it. Okay, so after my spoolie, my wand, whatever you call it, now I'm coming to the very base. Wiggle back and forth. The very base on the outer edge. Wiggle and carefully wiggle. I keep putting this in front of you, I'm so sorry. Then on my lower lash line, I do not wanna go in with a fresh wand. And there we go. Okay. Ta-da. Now your final thing will just be like, is there anything else I need? So I'm just now going to take a blush and place the blush, go on the big side and just get grab a couple, couple dabs. And I want to keep that shine. So I'm just going to softly just these like quick little wispy presses of whatever blush color I want. But it's so soft. Again, less makeup, less is more. It is so soft that people, when they see you, you just kind of look like you are blushing instead of having a lot of blush on. So soft. This one is called Candy. And Candy just gives me a little bit of color, but not too much. And there's my less is more. So I have, again, so the eyes were just to spiral out with your contour. Um, you can also do this with the nude blush if you want. Spiral out and bring it out, okay? So spiral out, bring it out. Take your that right in here, blend it along that line of the contour, lifting up, raising, okay? Freshen the skin to make sure it looks nice and shiny. Only, and then take care of the areas that annoy you. So if you need more foundation in key places, because they bug you as a whole, hit up those key places. In the under eyes, when you come then to apply with the other foundation, it is literally, you cannot see makeup on your brush. It is one tiny dab, and you are looking in the mirror to only address where you want it. Your goal is to not come into the whole under eye, come to the whole face, come to the whole whatever, it is truly just barely get that area, okay? And then you're done there. So that's the less makeup look that I have been messing with. It could change, but I hope that that helps you to get that neutral, natural eye so you also don't feel like you have to put it on a ton of eyeshadow. Like I said, I can do this so fast. Just get in the habit of only where it's needed. That's what's so awesome about a cream foundation is being able to um, only have it in key places so minimally because you cannot do this method with a liquid foundation if you're being as exact as this is. 
Okay, I hope that helped you out. I will go in after this and put all the links and all the things. I'll try to remember them all. And like I said, if I've ever missed anything, then you feel free to put it in the comments that you want a specific link. And if you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can email Jocelyn at fitmissionmakeup.com and we can get you a link. And then if you want a custom color match, which I recommend, it's only this makeup, Saint Makeup is only in the United States and Canada minus Quebec, but you can get a custom color match for me for free. So fitmissionmakeup.com and then I'll match you up. You can apply the makeup however your heart desires. On other days, I can actually, if I want to go on date night tonight and make this a way a heavier hand, all I would have to do is come in with my foundation colors, press it all over the face, press it all over the face, press it all over that I feel I needed it, brighten my lip, add some liner, put on some shadow, and I can build. It's so buildable, so buildable. All right, today I did my hair with a um, tapered wand. So we got a tapered wand. I did record a tutorial thing for it, so that will be over on Instagram. But have a great one. Take care. We'll see you later.